And so looking back, I think there are three things that worked uh, for us. Now, there are probably many other things that I don't know about. Uh, but the three things that worked for us over the years is time horizon. Uh, I think some people have called value investing uh, a time horizon arbitrage opportunity. But basically, there's a shrinking uh, amount of uh, a horizon that the average individual in the market uh, has today. I mean, if you go back in here in the US, for example, back uh, in the 50s, the average holding period was 20 years. Can you imagine? Uh, but even as, soon, as late as the 80s, the average investor held on to shares on the New York Stock Exchange, where they, this data is from, for five years. Uh, and now, I think the average holding is less than six months. So there's a, there's a, uh, a big shrinking investment horizon out there. And if you have, not always, but if you have a longer horizon, uh, there are many situations uh, where that gives you an edge and that there is a lot of uncertainty in the short term about what's gonna happen, uh, but a lot less uncertainty over a three or five or 10 year period. And so essentially by positioning yourself uh, to have a longer horizon and accept that uncertainty, you are getting paid by, by Mr. Market, by the market, uh, uh, for that uh, thing that is not important to you, but it is important to the average investor. Uh, so that's, that's one thing that I think is, uh, has been very success, uh, useful for us. The other thing is behavioral biases. Uh, we, we know, uh, we now know through the work of, of many people about the impact of behavioral biases on investing and on financial decisions in general. And I think there are many uh, situations where behavioral biases drive uh, investors to behave irrationally. Uh, and if you can position yourself for the use of tools, and I'll talk a little bit about this, to overcome these biases, or if you have uh, a psychological edge in your personality uh, where those biases impact you differently, They'll, they will impact you, nobody, unless you're Spock, but uh, they will impact you, but other than that, you need to have something that gets you uh, to behave in your behavioral biases differently than everybody else. Uh, and then the last thing uh, is uh, well, what I call the deterministic worldview. Uh, and that's the idea that most investors think of discrete outcomes. So they think uh, the stock is trading at 15, I think it's worth, it. it's worth 20, it's gonna go up by 33%. Uh, and we like to think of things more probabilistically. And so think of two scenarios, three scenarios, four scenarios, five scenarios, take it to the extreme and think of a million scenarios. And think of plotting all these scenarios around that core value and try to think about things in that way. So think of many, many, many potential outcomes. Uh, and in, in many cases that doesn't matter. But there are cases where that shape, the shape of the curve is very informative uh, and can be skewed one way or another. And in those skewed situations, you can exploit uh, the, uh, uh, the opportunity to make money at lower risk uh, than average. So those are the three things, time horizon, behavioral biases, and deterministic worldview.